What's up guys? Welcome back to Ever RC. So we are finally at the final build of this ERC time save. But don't get too excited yet as there are a few things to check and also the first time calibration. So the first thing you want to check is uh, some physical check like such as the wiring. Make sure it's all properly secure and connected. Especially on the control board. Make sure the polarity of the power supply is correct. And then the stepper direction is also correct. Notice where it's facing. And uh, servo wire positive and negative must be correct otherwise you experience some funny issue then um, the signal wire of the servo is plugged into the correct pin which is uh, Z plus and then uh, as for the stepper motor wires the connector if it's inverse it's fine it will just uh, go to the wrong direction and if, it's, if it vibrates that means uh, the pair is wrong you just google uh, looking for uh, stepper motors pair then uh, you should find uh, what, what it means and then just strap these uh, pins, these cables here, there are four wires. Also make sure the jumpers underneath the stepper driver is installed so you get uh, 116 micro sapping. Check that everything is secured. As for the needle, make sure that the loop, try to make it as, as centered as possible on the bearing. And then make sure it is rotating smoothly. For all configuration, if you build the same, then uh, this plate, adjustable height plate should be uh, at the top position. But of course it may be different and then make sure it's very smooth running as well as the uh, y-axis as well once all checked now you can finally start powering it up so there are two connectors that you need to plug in one is the usb one is the power supply of a 12 watt always remember to plug in 5 volt first don't plug in the 12 watt first okay this is to prevent it from uh, doing any funny thing so i really have the usb connected to my laptop's uh, usb and now i can connect the 12 volt already. Before that, make sure so tester is at its uh, minimum lowest position. And now let's hook it up, and then you should hear a beep from the ESC. Now, the first thing you're gonna do is not cutting yet. The first thing you're gonna do is to make sure that your needle or your flywheel is built properly. So, first step is you spin it for five minutes and check if there is any high heat on the bearings or not. Okay, you'll make sure that there's no uh, malfunction or any resistance here because if it gets too hot then you melt your PLA unless you have a high temp material to print this. I have a digital tachometer here to verify the RPM. This is a very very handy tool. If you don't have it and uh, you are not planning to buy, just borrow one from a friend because it's very very crucial to confirm the RPM of the flywheel which is best running at 8500 RPM. So I'm going to spin it up. Sounds good. Not too loud. It means uh, it's probably balance and then we'll check the rpm 9000 leave it there or we can tune it slightly lower so you can feel that the sound is much quieter now because if you go higher it becomes more noisy and uh, increase chances of more problems so i further reduce that 8007 so when it's running at 8500 rpm it's pretty quiet and I'm gonna let it really run for 5 minutes because this is a newly built machine to make a build video for you guys. So just set your timer to 5 minutes and let it run. Then I'm gonna check for the temperature of the bearing. It's fine. Not even warm. That's a good sign. And then notice I have installed the needle wire direction wrongly. I'm not sure if you can see it here. It should be the other way around. Once confirmed that it's not hot, you're going to run it for 30 minutes since uh, per cut is usually about 20 to 30 minutes just to make sure because you don't want what happened is that while you're cutting and then something go wrong and then just ruin your foam board. I know how that feels. Also while it's spinning just now, I touch on it to check for vibration and I think it's, it can be better. So when I have time, I'm going to do a balancing on the flywheel again. Now let's do the 30 minute continuous test and then we'll proceed to next step. Okay, 30 minutes have passed and uh, check on the bearing again. It's cool, not hot, it's good news. Motor is a little bit hot but it's fine as long as it doesn't melt the hot melt glue over there. 
So next thing we are going to do is to verify the Y and X motor direction as well as verifying the scaling, whether it's correct or not, whether 20cm in Inkscape or you could translate to actual 20cm of travel. How we're going to do that is to draw a line on uh, Inkscape and then we are going to do it one by one. The first line will be for X axis which is uh, the horizontal line. Vertical line will be Y axis. We're going to do with uh, X axis first and um, this is your home. This is where the zero zero is. If you look at direction like this, the bottom left is the home direction. Just the same as your Inkscape bottom left. So let's do this. I'm going to draw it as close as left side as possible. And then you can look at the bottom, there's, it shows uh, the, the length and then I'll press control to make sure that it's flat and then I drag it about 100mm which is 10cm That's black, black colour correct, then I'll do another one which is uh, 20cm which is 200mm Try to do it as close as possible. Or another way would be using the select, bu select button on top left and then just key in the length. Okay, so I have it made accurately. This is 100. Make sure you need this uh, mm as well. Make sure you have, make sure before I started all this, you have chosen, uh, you have already set the document properties all to mm and the A1 size. So over here I have uh, two lines one is 10 cm or 100 mm and then one is uh, 20 mm it doesn't matter where you put it but i recommend uh, making it closer to the the left so you begin from there now highlight it object to path then generate gcode from there this will be 10 okay 100 mm 200 mm Okay, then uh, make it 90. Uh, apply. Okay, our line is right there. Alright. So this is confirmed that our G code have uh, two lines. And now Ctrl Z to remove it first. Now open your JBL controller and uh, make sure your COM is correct. Then uh, ball rate is uh, 115-200. Then click open. It should pop up uh, your GRBL version. Okay, make sure it's 0.9i, and then it will automatically pop up the parameters as well. So in the previous video, we have already set it. We're going to calibrate this again just to make sure because in your machine it could be a slightly different. We are going to choose the 100 mm and 200 mm lines we drew just now with the GCode generated. Okay, I've loaded it, and then uh, so you can also confirm over here. This is 200. The size is 200. So if you are using Inkscape 0.91, your numbers here will be correct as well. What you drew in Inkscape 200, this will appear 200. If you are using 0.92 Inkscape, what you drew 200mm in Inkscape, this will be different. Because you are not sure whether your direction is correct or not, you want to move both your Y carriage and your X axis away from end point. Like this, I move it away from this, and the X axis, I move it out from here. I'm going to press begin now. My Y carriage will move a little bit and uh, see how's the response of the X axis. Alright, so it's moving away away from me that should be correct and uh, once it's done you should see it coming back home then you can know that it's, it's the right direction if you realize oh my x-axis direction is wrong you just flip the connector over here for the x-axis okay so now it comes back once it's done then that's correct now the next thing we're going to do is to calibrate the scaling or the e-step of the x-axis you want to have your ruler with zero right below the welding tip. Okay, let's make sure that welding tip is where your starting point is. Then now we'll press uh, begin again. So observe the first should be going to 20 and uh, this is just a demonstration to show you the concept of uh, how to check the scaling. So in when, uh, when you're actually doing it, you should be able to see it much clearer than me. And next will be 10. Okay. You know the concept, just do it. So I have 10 and 20 uh, actually set properly. If it's not, you can uh, alter the value of the X axis. Let's say your ruler measurement turns out uh, incorrect. Look for this dollar sign 100 here. If it's uh, result is larger you want to reduce num this number if your measurement turns out smaller then you want to increase this uh, value over here 
This is by typing dollar sign hundred and equals eighty five for example or ninety depends. Then just press enter. Next, we are going to calibrate the y axis. I just delete this x axis line. Draw another one close to the bottom as possible uh, while pressing control and then make convenient and just select my length 100 for example and then another one 200 and then another one 200 so why you want to make two lines is that I've noticed that uh, even if you just test 100mm turns out to be correct but 200 probably not correct so this will make sure that uh, the, the scaling is much more accurate by testing 100mm and 200mm. Go to 200 first. Yep. Spot on. Go out again. Yep. Now comes probably the most exciting part, which is to install the servo horn onto your servo. So this will control the up-down movement of your cutter head. First thing you're going to do is to test the response of the servo. When you clean the command for the first time, it may not move. Don't worry, because it depends on where your where the current uh, servo position is as you install it. So M5 is for the servo to go up to bring the cutter head up. So let's try M5. No reaction, we didn't hear any sound. So let's say M3 S90, don't worry. Then we heard uh, the sound from the servo. Then let's try M5 again. So it goes up, okay, M3 S90. Okay, I heard the sound of uh, the servo moves. Now M3 S90 means uh, fully go down, okay, which means a full cut. Now we install the servo horn to it and uh, notice the uh, position. Uh, the angle of uh, installation onto the servo. You do not want the servo horn to be parallel to the to the plate. Okay, about this angle, so this is full down. And now we'll try M5 whether it goes up fully or not. And then I press enter. Yep, so it goes up to the maximum over here. This is correct. And then I try M3S90 again in the command line. So it goes down fully and uh, no binding okay and uh, by the way you have to uh, cut cut the servo horn here shorter as well otherwise it will travel too high up and then uh, may create binding so you can fine tune there this is about the length of uh, the servo horn i have uh, cut at the front with uh, six holes remaining if you cut it too short then uh, the travel will be lesser so if there's any binding you start by cutting a little bit Start by trimming off the front part of the servo horn a little bit, then uh, try M3 S90 and uh, M5 again until there's no binding. Once you're satisfied, you can install the screw, but I have run this many times without a screw as well and it never pop up. Now lay your foam board. In previous video, I've shown you how to lay the foam board by applying four tapes on uh, all four corners and uh, it's a two layer of uh, 5mm thickness foam board. The bottom foam board will be uh, your waste board. The top foam board will be the actual board that you want. Now the first thing to do is to verify the cutting depth of the cutter head first. Uh, when this goes fully down, does it uh, punch through the first layer or not? You're going to start doing that by pulling your x-axis to closest to you as possible. And then move the flywheel to the downstroke position. And then now we are at M3 S90 or I can clean that again to make sure. Then go down and check. I can see from here is that uh, when it's uh, M3 S90, when the servo goes down fully and uh, when the flywheel is downstroke, I can see that the needle uh, pokes through the first layer and sometimes we, we have to uh, press down the first layer of foam board to make sure that it's really as accurate and then you want to have about 2cm or 1mm gap between the welding tip to the first layer of the foam board then let's try M5 Okay, once it's fully refracted, uh, you want to make sure that even at downstroke, it doesn't, it doesn't touch the top foam board. And then we're going to try the uh, score cut code, which is uh, M3S60. Okay, as you can see here, perfectly 
uh, 50% into the first layer of uh, foam board. So the best uh, code or the angle for score cut is uh, 60 as I find it after cutting so many. Now I'm gonna rotate it back to top position, okay? Now you can load the G code of the mini arrow sheet one that we created earlier by pressing begin then you will start cutting but we do not want to cut yet because there may be still error that uh, you made during this build so you're going to press uh, begin and let it run first without spinning up this flywheel and then you want to make sure that uh, the flywheel is at an upstroke otherwise when it goes down you'll be dragging your foam board always remember that and also before you press begin always key in m5 because if you don't, when it's at, let's say for example, M3 S90 position, it may bang onto the homing plate, okay, because it's beyond, it's into the zero zero home, okay. So wh whenever you do a new cut, before you start cutting, before you start spinning up your flywheel, please always make sure you key in M5 to bring the servo up first, okay. And uh, so let's try to press begin, let's try to run our full size G code without the flywheel spinning first see whether we have done anything wrong or not let's do it you're almost there so if so you go down for full cut and if you have forgotten to pull the needle to the up throat position <laughs> you will start dragging your foam board ruining your foam board okay it's moving fine now and it's pretty close to the border and I'm not going uh, out of the border so that should be fine that uh, it probably has got everything done installed correctly and over here at the screen you also can monitor uh, what is the current cutting position that is uh, the command that is giving currently once you have roughly tested that nothing wrong here you can uh, reboot your machine just uh, unplug power supply as well as the USB now plug back the USB and power supply and make sure everything is uh, correctly uh, secured down not moving too much then uh, select the right COM port and select the mini arrow G code just now and then as usual test the code okay no movement no worry try it again M5 okay you can hear the servo sound M3 S90 again Okay, let's go down then. Okay, M5. Before you begin, before you press begin, make sure you already key in M5. It's up. You can spin it up. Now you can finally start cutting. Press begin. The moment of truth. Also make sure you have already home it to a uh, maximum so that you don't go off range later. That's a very very nice cut. Look at that. Very very nice. My God, very nice cut. That's straight. We're at eighty-six percent, and it has started cutting the score cut already. Get that? Very good. So while it's cutting, I went uh, see my friend for for a chat. I just leave it here, and it has, and it has been uh, running. Uh, reliability, 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 reliably, reliably, already. 99 now. Alright, done. Perfect cut. Let's turn it off and uh, let's take a look. Well, so there were concern of these taps uh, going away, so it didn't. And uh, in fact, it's not easy. So let's try pop the main wing out, for example. Oh yeah. Look at this. Oops. 
So we have, have to give it a little bit of cut because uh, the first layer foam board may have uh, joined the bottom already. So that's why it's still there. Ah, so the bottom paper got stick to the bottom and then <laughs> I just broke the corner over here. So take a look at the back. Well, very really good. See, very fine cut. There's no imperfection except that I pulled it and broke it. Then let's try the other part. Is this is still tight. Yeah, just pop off. Let's try this. So you see, actually, the bottom layer of the first foam board got like sort of like melted or got punched into the waste spot that uh, made it held down together. So you see, perfect cut, man. Very nice. And there's a score cut as well. So we have finally come to the end of this ERC Time Save foam board cutter build video. Uh, thank you for following all the way here and hopefully by now you already have a reliable foam board cutter to cut RCA plane for you. And uh, thanks again for those who have ordered the light kit. If you have not, please go to our website which will be ready soon. Uh, you will find the link in the description in this video. So if you have this build completed, please share in the Facebook group and uh, I will be very happy to see that uh, you have a machine ready to cut the foam board for you and no longer you have to spend so much time doing hand cutting. So I'll see you in the next video as well as in the Facebook group. Please like and subscribe and uh, pressing the notification button if you have not done so. I'll see you again. Bye! Yeah!